Atheists want evidence of God. Well, that's just silly. Of course there's not evidence for God. Now, they also believe in things that don't have evidence, like the laws of logic, which are axioms. Uh, which, of course, can be shown to be true by formulas, but we're going to ignore that. Anyways, uh, they also believe in knowledge, which is something that they can't prove with empirical evidence. Well, they do have repeatable tests for that, again, with it different formulas that we don't have for God, but that doesn't matter. We'll ignore that because the category of God is a thing that you would expect to have evidence, but it just doesn't have evidence because I'm going to pretend like it's a different category. Ah! Anyways, look into my eyes. I will explain. Ah! Atheists are like Hitler. That's right. They're all evil and vile and terrible and they smell bad and they probably stink and they, they, they like Satan and yeah, they, they don't have... Anyways, <clears throat> what was I saying? Um, oh, yes, uh, when you ask for evidence for God, you're making a category error, because obviously God is like magic, or uh, laws of logic, but he's got a mind, so uh, mind is also not physical. Nothing is physical. Everything is not physical. Oh, my eyeballs, what happened? Ah! I'm a fire in my laser. Blah! Oh, Dr. Octavonadon. Presuppositionalism commits a number of logical fallacies. It's arguing in circles, there's dogmaticness in there. Of course, it's a lot of just messing around with words, which is alphabet soup. And of course, you have the argument of ignorance and then personal credulity. And of course, you have all sorts of special plating. And it all relies on a confirmation bias. You can't be wrong about the existence of God. Because of all these things that Precept comes packaged with, I cannot hope to educate this person on what the difference is between God and things like the laws of logic. There's no hope for him. I can't fix stupid. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. The only thing I could think to do would be to have the lobsterist go up against his God. The lobsterist will win because Laud is able to eat other gods, unlike his god. So my god's better, because it can eat other gods. And that's the greatest concept of god possible, is one that can eat other gods. Therefore, my concept of god must be the real and true god. All his questions are easily answered by some bare, minimal research of philosophy. Precept is stuck and it always has been by design. You start with your conclusion, you end with your conclusion. You make it so that no matter what, you have already won. You are not playing a fair game. You are playing a game whose outcome has already been decided because you have decided that this is the only way to move forward in reality. There are many concepts that we have such as laws of logic, knowledge, truth, etc. These are constructs of the mind. They exist as long as our brains exist, because without our brains, as far as we know, there is no mind. We have never seen a mind without a brain. And perhaps you might say computers have minds, but that's still something physical that's causing that to happen. The laws of logic themselves, we think, are descriptions of reality itself. We could be wrong about them, but it doesn't seem that we are. So what is that? Well, it's not like a law of gravity that affects things. This describes reality. Now, of course, the precept wants to say that God is like that. Fine. But the problem is, if God is like that, without any special pleading, then God is a description, and that doesn't do stuff. His complaints about materialism from part one, remember all that nonsense? Yeah, the same would be true of his God. It wouldn't do anything, it'd just be a description. What's the true nature of reality? God. Well, what's God? It's just a description of what reality is. Why do we need God then? Just say reality. We don't need the word when we have a different word. God would be completely unable to do anything if it's like the laws of logic. It doesn't have a mind. And that's actually what many apologists say. God is spaceless, timeless. It isn't made out of anything. It isn't like the natural world. It's everything that the natural world isn't. 
Well, the natural world really exists for real. So if God is the opposite of that, then God doesn't exist for real. Oops. In the original video that I'm responding to with this mockery here, he tries to point out what he thinks is hypocriticalness of the atheist. And even if he was successful in doing that, that proves nothing. People can be and are hypocritical. It's not a logical fallacy. Well, you're asking for evidence of God, but there isn't evidence of this, this, or this. Oh no, there is actually evidence of the laws of logic. Without them, we can't do anything else. The axioms are there, asserted as brute fact. And then the formulas show that that brute fact continually works. You want God to be an axiom. That's what all preceptors want, but they've never been able to demonstrate it. There's no formula. There's no explanation of it. There's nothing that you can do with it that can't be done with other abstract ideas like the laws of logic. You put God into a different category than the laws of logic. It's in a supernatural category. That's not non-physical. That's something else that maybe you will think is non-physical. But to be supernatural, whatever that is, there's still soul or spirit or something. It has to be made out of something unless it's just a description. And if it's a description, then it can't do anything. And if that's what God is, then... God's just a word, and that's it. He has many questions for atheists that he doesn't bother to ask atheists. And when he does ask them, he won't accept their answers. He's not interested in understanding what we think and why. He's interested in being right for himself and or his audience. For me, I just want to know the truth. What is real? These words are coherent and have meanings. And I'm not going to pretend that you don't understand them. Stop doing that. You're not going to. Anyways, we don't have any empirical evidence or any repeatable test like we do for these other things. And we don't have a sound argument from you. And unless and until we have empirical evidence, repeatable tests, or a valid and sound argument, we must be skeptical of the conclusions. So long, Jim Bob. It's been fun. Thanks for the stuff that, that came my way from interacting with you. Goodbye. So long. Adios. Sayonara. See ya. Than it can be Take it down one more notch So you can feel like you won Now watch As you gloat and sing and dance You do not know that I've got Victory and much stronger Can't refute it and it's Not even that long